I remember one homecoming. I was I was at a homecoming, and uh, one of the guys looked over to the other guy. I was preaching the homecoming. The guy said, "I'd rather hear that man preach than eat." The other guy said, "Me too. I heard him eat." <laughs> I say God's got this. God's got this. That's right. You know, <laughs> you know uh, I heard about these two men talking about the secret of a long, happy marriage. Heard one guy say, yeah, it remains a secret. Actually, the guy said, the two men were talking about the secret of a long, happy marriage. Our marriage said one is built on trust and understanding. He said, my wife don't trust me and I don't understand her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> and he cut that out of the, out of the, the video. Amen. Amen. That's right. That was good. Uh, we started this a couple weeks ago. Last week we talked about Valentine's Day. And so we're going back in. We still got a couple weeks on this. Uh, I'm excited about it because it really does. It answers a lot of questions. Uh, just Friday, Thursday, we found our, our lab. Everybody's ever heard me talk about Maddie. Do it afraid, Maddie. You may hear about do it afraid, Maddie. She woke us up every morning. She made sure we went to bed on time. Uh, she always looked out the window. So if anybody was coming up, they was, she could see us in the window. And and it's just she was just a pleasure, a wonderful pleasure to have. Well. She'd been sick for several, for about a month or so, but it got to where she was in diapers and we were having to feed her with a syringe. It was really, really bad, and you could tell she was hurting. And so we took her to Wilson, got an ultrasound to find out she had two tumors. And if there's two tumors, you know what it usually means. There's more. And they talked about resetting her bowel and taking out her adrenal glands and all kinds of stuff. And she's almost 11, so I said, Linda, what do you want to do? And she said, can we just let her go in peace? And so we took her Friday, and we let her go. We left her in the car, and they came out to the car, and we let her go, and then we took her home and buried her. And it was bad enough. But as we were getting ready to, as we were getting ready to come out to her, I said, Maddie, you're getting ready to go see Bethany. And that got Linda. Then when the people come up, they said, uh, have you ever seen this before, seen something die like this? And Linda said, we watched our daughter, you know, die. And so she said, okay. And, and literally, it was like watching Bethany all over again, the same exact stuff. Although Bethany wasn't euthanized, still it was the same stuff. And so I thought, wow, you know, and it hurts. Man, does it hurt. But last night when I came home, instead of seeing her little head at the window looking for me, Linda had put a great big heart and stuck it in the window. Aww. Yeah, that, I, I'm still trying to get over that. That made my head leak really, really bad. But as long as your head leaks, it won't swell. That's right. Uh, and this morning was kind of tough, but we know God's got this. But again, this is part of this. This is part of this. I, I said, God, I didn't understand the timing of this message. And usually when I'm doing messages, some way, somehow, some of this will wind up applying in my life very strongly. And so this is one of those times where if anybody's ever had a, had a special animal pet, uh, or, or somebody in your family you just love dearly and you had to say goodbye. It, it's just a terrible thing. We had to say goodbye to Bethany. We said goodbye a couple months later to my wife's brother who had mesothelioma and and done 25 funerals since just before Bethany's death and it never gets any easier. It, it always hurts even when I'm not even connected to the family. It still hurts because I feel, I feel the pain. Well, and so today, or this week, I got a chance to say goodbye to, to Maddie, and I'm glad we said goodbye and said her sitting there suffering so bad. And so, again, you never know what you're going to have to do until you do it. But mustard seed faith and nothing is impossible doesn't mean that God's going to heal every time. It doesn't mean that God's going to make it all perfect every time. When, when, when Philippians says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, it does not mean I'm going to be an NBA. I can be an NBA sinner if I want to be. I could even be an NBA water boy. <laughs> what it means is you're equal to the task ahead of you. Nothing is impossible. You can say this mountain will be removed. It does not mean that everything is going to go your way. God is not upstairs up in heaven with the heavenly seers catalog and says, you place your order, it will happen to you. Or Amazon will give it to you in two days. 
No. What it means is, whatever the outcome, God always makes you more than enough through Him to do what you've got to do. And so, so here we go. We're going to get your Bibles out. Stand for the reading of the Word. Matthew 8. Matthew 8. It drives me crazy when I sit and watch these guys listening on the radio and watch them on television preach a pie in the sky. Everything's going to be hunky dory. You have to go through nothing. It's all, you know, I remember telling about uh, even if, uh, mercy, I think it's mercy me, seems even if, and they had a special needs child, and it's, it's been a lot of stuff they had to go through, this special needs child. And there was times he even felt like God had, for a while there, God had even turned his back on him. But then he, he got grips with it. And he wrote that song, Even If. God, even if you don't fix it, I thank you and I'm going to trust you, even if. It's like the three Hebrew boys said, you can throw us in the fire. And even if you throw us in the fire, we're still not going to serve you, Nebuchadnezzar. And we're not going to bow to your image. So again, nothing is impossible. It means God's going to give you what it takes to get through what you need to get through. And let God be God. Amen? Amen. Matthew 8, 23. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the seas obey him? Stretch forth your hands this way. Father, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to call upon you at any time. No matter if things are going smooth sailing or if the things have gotten rough, we thank you, God, that you're always there. And we thank you, God, that you set us an ultimate example by your Son, to show us that although life many times is not fair, you're always faithful. And we thank you for that. I ask you right now to touch us, each one of us, anoint our hearts, anoint our ears, anoint us to hear what thus saith the Lord today. And Father, let me get so close to you that I hear what you're saying. Lord, I love you. And I thank you for this day. And would you just pray in the church said? Amen. Look at somebody and say the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing shall be impossible. Amen. You be seated. And we'll go over a few clips from the last few weeks. Just a few clips. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Because I want to get to today's portion but for those that have not been, had a chance to see all of this, it would be good to give you some clarification and some continu uh, continuity into what this whole message is about. But, but again, look, God has given every man a measure of faith. Amen? God has given every man, watch this, and I'll be quick about it. God has given every man first a chore, a mission. God has given everybody a chance or an opportunity to fulfill that mission. But also with the chance he gives challenges, which is problems. The problems are there not to destroy your mission. It's not there to make things harder, but it's there to bring out the best in you. I operate better when I'm under pressure. I operate better when I've got when I've got walls, when I've got boundaries, when I've got to, I can't just do my own thing. I've got to, I know I've got to get it done. Also, he gives us confidence. Uh, enabling faith. Romans 12 and 3 says, God has given every man a measure of faith. Matthew 17 and 20, faith is as a grain of mustard seed. You can say this mountain, be thou removed and cast in the sea, and it shall be done for you. Also, here, here's the challenges now. The challenges is, here it is, problem number one, it was an unending, uneasy task. It was an exhausting day. They had been ministering. They were tired. They have no idea that they're getting ready to go to the other side and get even deeper stuff. The problem number two is it's an uneasy time, and they're in the middle of a severe storm. And an uneasy, uneasy, uneasy temptation, they were in a sinking ship, and they saw what they considered to be a sleeping Savior. But remember now, 
If you're going through something today, if something's not quite working right, how many's got things in your life that it might not be quite working out the way you expected it? Okay? Remember this. When they're on that ship, Jesus led them into the storm. They followed him right in the middle of a crisis. God's will is not always smooth sailing. Tell somebody, God's will is not always smooth sailing. Okay. Then, then, we're getting ready to get, we're getting ready to get into to the new stuff. Here we go. I'm trying to hurry up. Here's the chance. The opportunity of faith. Faith in God doesn't make things easy. It makes things possible. Okay? So, here, here it is. Here, here's lessons in faith. There's a difference in little faith and faith as a grain of mustard seed. So, here, get ready. This will be the last part before we go into this week's. And here it is. Watch this. Oh, look at there. You see? What's that? Is that Peter walking on the water and Jesus picking him up? Watch this. The difference in little faith and mustard seed faith. Little faith is puny. Mustard seed faith is powerful. Little faith is confidence in self. Mustard seed faith is confidence in God. Mustard seed faith is conviction that God is bigger than my problem. Little faith is the problem is bigger than God. You say, I would never say that. We might not say that, but sometimes we act like it. Come on now. Say amen or ouch. One. Amen. Because amen. Amen. I say that sometimes too. All right? Here we go. Little faith brings confusion and loss. Mustard seed faith brings conquest and grant and gains. Here we go. Here's, the, here, here, here's our new stuff. Three, three principles on the life of faith. Number one. I know you don't want to hear it all the time, but here's what you're going to hear anyway, because this is biblical. Is it something high in the sky get me to give you a thousand dollar seed so you can get a car? Okay? Ready? Faith must be challenged, not pampered. Wow. I just want to say wow. 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 Faith must be challenged, not pampered. You know, uh, uh, I, I sit there and, and, and I noticed in my own kids, and my own kids never were coming up. If I pushed them, if I pushed them to do better, if I allowed them to go through some things that caused pain, if, if, I, if I didn't just treat them, try to take them and, and, and shield them from everything, it's amazing. You know, I right now look at my sons and one went to Afghanistan. Right now this one here is in D.C. Uh, uh, he's right now in the fire department trying to get his, uh, going for paramedic eventually. But I watch these guys. And, and, and D.C. went into a fire the other night, and he come out, and, and another guy said, we're dressed the guys. This is out of the road. D.C. told Daniel. Daniel said, that's that Linton. I won't say exactly what he called it. <laughs> okay. But anyway, about it, he said, Daddy's told us to not be afraid to accept the challenge, to step forward, to step in. To give it all you got. I told the CSI, I'm so, so proud of you, son. You're doing your clinicals today. You keep on going because all their life, I never pampered them. I challenged them. And the same way, God is not pampering us. He's challenging us with everything we face uh, during the day. Not only this, but faith is not a life absence of conflict, but of conquest in conflict. You know, somebody asked me the other day, said, I told somebody to stay out of trouble. I always say that. And watch says, you didn't quit saying that. Well, it's really what I was about coming to B5 or going to bit attention or go, y'all got to stay out of trouble. <laughs> and they go, really? <laughs> I came in Monday, they wouldn't they want to get out of the bed. And I said, y'all have a bad weekend? Y'all been out partying all weekend? And they said, yeah, yeah, we got a pass. Now let's go out and party. No, we're just tired. Okay. Faith is not a life absolute conflict but of conquest, in conflict. And then watch this. A faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. I told you all about that last week at the altar call about a young man that was going through something with his child and they said his brain was not developing and they, they, they said, you need to abort this child. And he said, I don't feel like I'm supposed to be aborting this child and I believe God's going to handle it. And I said, so I made that up for him. Faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. In Genesis 22, and I stuck it up there and I put it on his desk. And every day I said, I want you to see this every day. I want you to say this every day. 
and think about Abraham and Isaac. And, and he did that. And I remember a couple months later, he come to me and said, my wife had that test today, and the baby's developing fine as can be. And like I told you, this has been years ago, and just a couple months ago, I met that boy. He's about that tall. And he's a football player. And he's just as big as his daddy. <laughs> Amen. So, 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 so here we go. Watch this. Get ready. Get ready. Only God can turn a mess into a message. Come on now. I mean, they got a mess in here. <laughs> Amen. Only God can turn a mess into a message. A test into a testimony. A trial into trial. A victim or, uh, into, a, into a victory. Amen. So here we go. Get ready. Get ready. Number one, God allows tests in our life. You just know that? Things might say, I don't like it, but I know that. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. But I know that. Watch this. Number one, He wants you to search yourself. Then we may discover ourselves. You know, there's a lot of things I said I couldn't do until I had to do them. And once I got into trial and I said, Lord, I hope I never have to go through this as a pastor. I get involved with a lot of things, a lot of sickness, a lot of disease, a lot of things in court, a lot of things with all kinds of people, you know, in counseling, uh, all this stuff I encounter. And, and there's times where I say, God, I, I, I pray that I never have to go through something like this, but if I do, help me to show you as I go through it. It's like with Bethany. Bethany, she showed God the whole time. Everybody knew her. Knew. She never she never had a victim mentality. Never. All the stuff she went through, she never had a victim mentality. And, and then when she got cancer at the end, she never had like a victim. She stood strong and all she kept saying was, God's got this. God's got this. God's got this. See the way I win, Dad. God's got this. But not only is it to search you, it's also to strengthen yourself. His testing will strengthen you. It'll give validation to your testimony. Don't come to me and say, you've seen God get you through a lot of things. So tell me some of them. Well, he got me out of a parking ticket. Okay, really? I'm glad he got you out your parking ticket. But right now, I'm going to, I just, I just, I just euthanize my dog in the backseat of my car. And I said, help my dog while they put her to sleep. I could care less about your ticket. When you say, I put my dog to sleep. Something that gave me strength Tuesday night. I knew, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. And, and Linda came, Linda Mark came up to me. And she told about two different dogs she had. She said one they went through all the stuff that was supposed to be done. And even at the end, I did all the things they said would make it better. The dog still died. And she said she wished she hadn't have done that. And then, and then she said the other dog, she went in and let it go to sleep peacefully. And she said in a couple of days she got a piece about it. And so while Linda and I were sitting down trying to figure out what we're going to do with Maddie, I said, can I tell you something Linda Martin told me? You had no idea, sister, how God was using you Tuesday night. It gave me strength like you wouldn't believe. Because you weren't talking about how you got you out of the parking ticket in front of the courthouse. You were talking about a real life situation and how God moved. And so, so we did what we had to do, okay? None of that, but it helps you step beyond yourself. Okay? His, his test destroyed all of our self-sufficiency. How many saw mighty army this morning? The closer you move to self-sufficiency, the farther away you move from God's sufficiency. Amen. The closer you get to doing it on your own, the farther you get from God. Somebody should have told me my buttons were not buttoned. At least the front buttons are buttoned. Y'all really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll get this up here too. Hold on, hold on, we'll get it here. Eventually. Yeah. Y'all guys, if you see me looking like something's wrong, y'all please tell me. You, something ain't right. You need to fix it. You're not gonna aggravate me, I promise you. And this is not a fashion statement. <laughs> this is the fashion statement now. Alright. Romans 5 and 4. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops character, or develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation, and this hope will not lead to disappointment, 
For we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came just at the right time and died for sinners. Now, let me show you something here. I love this. Going forward, when it gets tough, a test of how tough you are, is, but how strong your faith is. There you go. I can't even talk. Here we go. Here we go. A bar of iron. Let's just say we got a bar of iron. This, 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 I'm not sure how old this is, but it's true. A bar of iron is worth five dollars. Okay? Here's your bar of iron. That bar of iron that you had that's worth five dollars, if it's molded into horseshoes, it's worth ten dollars and fifty cents. It was made into needles. It's worth three hundred and fifty dollars. That same five dollar bar. Horseshoes ten fifty. Made into needles. It's worth three fifty. Made into penknife blades. That five dollar piece of iron is worth three thousand two hundred and eighty five dollars. If it's made into springs. For watches, you know what to guess? That five dollar piece of iron, if it's made into springs for watches, that whole piece of iron, that five dollar piece of iron, somebody give me a guess. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That one five dollar piece of iron. Now, here's the thing: the more it's manipulated. The more it's hammered, the more it's passed through the heat, the more it's beaten, the more it's pounded, the more it's polished, the greater its value. Some of y'all in here, you feel like you've been manipulated, hammered, passed through the heat, beaten, pounded, and polished. But I can guarantee you one thing. It hasn't lessened your value, although you feel like it has. The more you've gone through, the higher your value is because now you've got some. You got something to talk about. You got something you can tell somebody else about. You, your test has become a testimony. Your mess has become a message. And so, you know, think about it. You want to be that five dollar piece of iron, or you want to be that two hundred fifty thousand dollar set of springs for watches? And people all the time say, "I want to shine, Lord. I want to shine," but you don't want to use the Brillo pad. I want to shine, God. Let me shine. But please take that, take that sandpaper off of me. Here's all the rough edges, God. But please get the file off of me. No, he's increasing your value. Now, when you're going through something hard and wonder where God is, remember, the teacher is always quiet during the test. Where is he? God, don't you see what I'm going through? The disciples, they were going through the storm. Jesus was looked like he was sleeping, but they, said, they just thought he was sleeping. They didn't realize he was being quiet during the test. So watch. Principles about testing our faith. The very first principle was, of course, God allows tests. The second one, with each test comes, watch this. Threats. They're unexpected. Although... These guys are common. They knew that storms would come out of nowhere because the mountains each, there was mountains on each side of the lake. And so they knew that storms could start and they not even see them because the mountains had them hid. And when they come over the mountain, they could come in like hurricane, hurricane force winds at the drop of a hat. That's how the fishermen fish. They always fish close to the shore. Because close to the shore, whenever that hurricane wind would come in or those storms would come in, they can get back easily to shore. So, so here's the threat. It's unexpected. And now they're unprepared. All of their seasoned fishermen. <laughs> How many times have you gone through something? And you think it's going to be just like the last trial. And you're getting ready for it. And all of a sudden, you're going, wait a minute. This is different. Wait a minute. I thought I had my hand 
together. This is not what I was expecting. I was expecting to be a little easier in this because I've gone through it before. But you go through it now and you find out it's worse than it was the first time. So there's always a threat with each test. And of course there is the test. And the test is our response. How are we going to handle it? And are we going to take responsibility or are we going to blame somebody else? It's so easy to blame somebody else. Well, you know, we'll be going through this test and that person did what they were supposed to do. We'll be having this problem and that person did what they were supposed to do. Well, I don't understand why they, they, they. Take responsibility in your test. I may not be the cause of it. I may have been the cause of it. But if I take responsibility in the solution, now I'm not become a part of the problem. I'll become a part of the solution. <coughs> in testimony, when it's all over with, you're going to say, he was there all the time. Get really close. Cause we got some more to go. And I, don't want to, I want to let it softly sink in. Are you passing your test? That's a good question. Stop and think about everything you're going through right now. Are you passing the test or are you passing the book? Are you looking to God for more strength and thank Him for what you're going through? Are you looking at Him and blaming Him for everything that's happening? In your life. <clears throat> oh, let's get it back up here. Come on back here. Where are we? Come on. <laughs> little, little, fingers, little, little, little fingers little slick on the trigger there. <laughs> Air trigger. Yes, sir. 1 Peter 1 to 7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It's being tested as fire test and purifies gold. Through your faith, it is far more precious than that mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Y'all, a lot of y'all have heard this. I'm still going to say it anyway. Some of y'all haven't. In Malachi, it says he will sit like a refiner by the fire. When the purifier is purifying gold, the refiner is by the fire. He has a ballast in his foot. He has a ladle in his hand. And he has this <coughs> cast iron uh, uh, jug or jar, or whatever you want to call it. And he has a fire beneath it. What he does is he puts in the silver or the gold. And with the ballast, he gets the fire going. <coughs> he gets the fire really, really hot, and that silver or gold begins to melt as it's melting, he takes his ladle, because as it melts, it starts to boil, and as the silver is boiling, he takes the ladle, because the impurities come to the top of the silver, he takes the ladle, and he swipes off the impurities, and it throws them away, he fires up the fire again. Impurities come, he takes his foot off the gas. As it's cooling down, he takes the impurities off with the ladle and he throws them to the side. He gets the ballast and he gets the gas going again. And he boils it, same process, takes his foot off the gas, so to speak, and takes off the impurities. Do you know when he knows to stop doing this? When he can see his reflection. During the heat, he can see his reflection in the silver. Some of y'all right now are wondering, why won't God stop this trial? And just maybe, just maybe, it's a thought. Maybe he's waiting to see his reflection in you. Wow. That's some powerful stuff. Going forward when the going gets tough, it's not a test of how tough you are again, but how strong your faith is. The ultimate. You know, I want to write a book about Bethany. It's going to be called what God's Got This. I don't know if this picture is going to be on the front page, the back page, in the middle, or where.
This is not a made up picture. When this picture was sent to me, my heart dropped. I sent it to DC and DC wrote back and said, Dad, please, whatever you do, use that picture. Can I tell you? This is Clyde's boat. It's a hundred foot fish boat. Trawler. He got disabled while it was out in the water and all that big that big wind. It blew it up on the shore. It's still there. They're trying to get it back in the water. But when he sent that picture, he didn't say, why would God let this happen? If you look, what's it say? God's got this. Wow. It also says Team Bethany, like, right I can't there. read that good. It's in the sand right there. Right there. And it says Team Bethany. Thank you. Oh. Team Bethany, God's got this. I couldn't get it very good. That was good. That was just fine. Let me tell you something. If that doesn't speak volumes, nothing, <laughs> nothing will speak to you. Go and put the dirt on the top of it because you're gone. <laughs> wow. Some of you today, that's where you're at. You're ready. You got everything ready to go. But instead of being in the water, you're on the shore. Instead of being doing what you're supposed to be doing, you feel disabled. You got a choice to make. Are you going to sit back and cry about it? Or are you going to do what needs to be done to get back in that water and take care of business? And remember, <laughs> God's got this. And of course, Team Bethany. Wow. Jeff, come over here and start playing something, bro. Play it softly. Everybody just sing it. Everybody stand, bow your head. When you're going through something, I want you to change the way you're thinking about something. I want y'all to say this with me. Lord, 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 Lord. I, know I know this is not happening to me, this is not happening to me. but it's happening for me. It's happening for me. I get, I get to, learn to learn about your power, about your power. In, a in a greater way. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I just can't get enough to look at that picture. It's just, oh. It is so powerful. When we're trying to make a decision about Mandy, I looked on the floor and I watched her all. She was in pain and it was just pitiful. She was wearing a diaper. We couldn't feed her with a syringe. Oh. And I was working on today's sermon. And I popped in that picture. And I said, that's right, God. You got this. You got this. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm not even sure how to even ask this, but if you've been going through something, Nobody's looking around, every eye closed, every head bowed. And you felt like it was going against you. You didn't realize that God doesn't want to pamper you. He wants to challenge you. Every warrior of God, every warrior of God was never pampered. They were always Challenged. It was Goliath, the challenge of Goliath, 
that actually made David king. You're going through something today and you may have been thinking that it was happening to you instead of for you and didn't realize that God wanted to challenge you, not pamper you. But now you've got a better insight. And you're just needing God to help you now because your whole avenue, your whole outlook has changed. While nobody's looking around, we just have a hand and say, you know what? I'm seeing it different right now. Yes, yes, I'm seeing it different. And I thank you, God. Some of y'all might be here today and you know God is allowing this, but you found it hard to thank Him in the middle of the storm. Remember, you can do all the things through Christ and strength in you, which means He's going to help you be ready for the challenge that comes to you. He's going to make you ready to be able to handle the waves that come your way. He's going to give you the ability, if need be, to step out and walk on the sea. shot in your arm because the trials are rough. The waves are coming over the boat. Things aren't always looking so good. Nobody looking at me head bowed. We just stick up that hand and say, I, I need I need God. I need Him. For sure me. Let's pray together, y'all. Lord, Lord, this is your day. This is your day. I didn't come here by accident. You wanted me to hear this message. I realize that my faith must be challenged, not hampered. And I thank you that even though the challenge is here, I'm not facing it by myself. There may be times I don't see your hand, but I know I can trust your heart. And I thank you, God, that you love me enough to allow me to face challenges. Right now, God, I'm yours. Do with me what you like. I thank you for all that you Give Lord a hand clap of Let's sing that together. Somebody sing it What's the song? Hey.